name is Amy Baisal. I'm the Curator of Collections at the International Museum of the Horse here at the Kentucky Horse Park. 2017 is Manowar's 100th birthday. In 2013, we started thinking about this birthday and what a big thing it, it was, especially since Manowar is buried on the park. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we could restore his patina and not only um, restore the intentional look of the sculpture as it was meant by the artist, but also in the long run it's going to help preserve the metal. Herbert Hazeltine was revered for the work that he did. He was most well known as an animal sculptor, as specifically an equine sculptor. From what I understand, he started the sculpture in 1940. He lived, Herbert Hazeltine lived on the farm when he was sculpting. He sort of had a schedule that he worked with Man of War and his handler's groom, um, Will Harbutt, and it was completed in 1947 is when the final bronze that you see today was installed at Faraway Farm. When the sculpture was placed on the park, the majority of its original patina was no longer existed. And, and for a while here at the park, I think he, he did turn mostly green, that copper green. From the environment and the, just the weather, acid rain, pollutants in the environment, just the effects of cold and hot and sun and ice and is what eventually wears out off the patina on any bronze sculpture. With that type of color, you lose some of the integrity and the detail of the work that the artist did. We started with a yearly um, review of the sculpture and we started um, waxing the sculpture every year to take down those real high green areas. What I noticed is that, uh, you know, undoubtedly those spots would reappear by the beginning of summer and we would have to do this again. What I also noticed is that in certain grooves in the um, tail, especially in the mane on the sculpture, you could still see remnants of what the original patina had been. And you could tell that it had been this sort of you know, reddish-brown chestnut color, which is what the color of Man of War, the, the horse was actually a chestnut color. In an effort to preserve the sculpture, the integrity of the sculpture, the, the actual physical being of the sculpture as well, we decided to start fundraising and see if we could raise enough money to put a new patina on. It took us three years to fundraise the entire amount, but we were able to do it thanks to the foundation and the public, so we looked around for professionals in the area that would be able to help us with the project. And that's how we met up with John Klein and his team at Casting Arts and Technology in Cincinnati. I think one of the most special aspects of doing the restoration on Manowar is coming to an understanding of the significance of the monument itself. Most of the bronzes in the park seem to depict a specific moment in time. Manowar is very different than that. He's not moving. He's standing in a very noble, static position. The sculpture has a singular presence which sets it off as a monument, not just of a moment in time, but of all time. And I think that that's an incredibly fitting tribute to the horse that Manowar was and the legend carrying forward. Uh, one of the unique challenges in working on a sculpture of this scale is access. He's on an island surrounded by a moat, and obviously significantly elevated on that island by the base on which he stands. So it was necessary uh, for us to have a scaffold uh, set up around the bronze in order to be able to reach all the various areas. The first step um, in the process is basically to remove all of the old finish on the sculpture. The process by which the uh, finish is removed uh, is fairly time-consuming and actually a rather delicate process. Uh, sort of like trying to clean a battleship with a Q-tip. We're using a pressurized pot with a cleaning media. Uh, the operator needs to be extremely careful, pay very close attention to every square inch of the sculpture so that the only thing that ends up being removed is what needs to be removed, meaning previous layers of wax or the old patina. 
what you don't want to do is end up dwelling on any particular area too long and potentially create irreparable damage to the bronze. So one of the unique features of the sculpture of Man of War, his eyes are made of glass. And so we had a certain amount of trepidation, if not fear, uh, of working around those glass eyes because we're using these large propane torches, we're putting out 500,000 BTUs of heat. If we overheated the eyes or heated them and then inadvertently quenched them, there was a very high likelihood that they could shatter. So there was the extra layer of caution uh, that was necessary in order to be sure that we didn't damage the eyes while using the torches. So once we had Man of War stripped of the old finish, <clears throat> it became clear that a couple of extra steps would be needed in order to achieve that reddish tone. Um, Man of War being nicknamed Big Red, we were told that a color kind of in the range of a chestnut horse um, would be the goal. And maybe uh, counterintuitively, the first step was to take him from a relatively bright, clean bronze finish and turn him green. Uh, so we used large uh, propane torches to heat the casting, and we applied a chemical called cupric nitrate. At some stage, Man of War was actually completely green. We then applied a second chemical, which is known as ferric nitrate. Once again, we heat the surface of the casting to about the same temperature, and we applied multiple layers of the ferric nitrate to achieve the color saturation that you see on the final product. The final step was to apply a layer of synthetic wax. And so the wax layer that we apply is a blend of two synthetic waxes that are designed to resist the ongoing reaction of the bronze with the atmosphere. And so the net result is what you see now in the horse park, hopefully uh, something that will hold its color tone for uh, years to come.